The episcleral venous fluid wave and canal-based glaucoma surgery. The episcleral venous fluid wave, seen repeatedly here, is an intraoperative appraisal of the patient's aqueous outflow channels. The episcleral wave is a blanching of episcleral veins, seen briefly, during a surge of balanced salt solution through a canal-based surgical site. As presented at the 2014 ASCRS meeting, the observation of the venous fluid wave demonstrates anatomic patency of the deep, mid, and superficial collector channels, correlates with the type and extent of canal-based surgery, and informs the surgeon a proper device placement. In order to better understand the significance of the episcleral venous fluid wave, it is imperative to review aqueous outflow anatomy. There are two paths for aqueous to exit the eye. The pressure-dependent trabecular route seen in red and the pressure-independent uveoscleral route in brown. Approximately 70 to 75 percent of aqueous outflow is through the trabecular Schlem's canal route and the rest through the uveoscleral route. Aqueous typically travels from the posterior chamber through the pupil into the anterior chamber through the trabecular meshwork into Schlem's canal and out the collectors and the venous plexus and the episcleral route. The uveoscleral route is through the uveal tract and out the sclera and its emissary. For the trabecular route, aqueous must pass successively through five key locations, including trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, the deep plexus in red, the mid scleral plexus in green, and the superficial scleral plexus in blue. We can visualize three of those five sites by gonioscopy and slit lamp exam, but we are unable to see the deep or mid scleral plexus because it is buried in the sclera. However, to observe a wave, aqueous must pass through both the hidden deep and mid plexi, thus demonstrating their patency. All trabecular outflow is anterior to the important gonioscopic landmark, the scleral spur, and all uveoscleral outflow is posterior to the spur. But where is most of the resistance to aqueous outflow located? The seminal laboratory outflow resistance studies by Morton Grant and later refined by David Epstein show that approximately 60% of outflow resistance resides in the trabecular meshwork Schlem's Canal area. This still leaves 40% of resistance to outflow downstream to the canal in the scleral channels and veins. Epstein stressed that this is why canal-based procedures typically result in mid-teens intraocular pressure. In addition, Grant and Asher believe that most of the remaining 40% resistance to downstream flow was located in the deep intrascleral venous plexus. When trabeculectomy fails, the absence of a bleb, a visible outcome marker, helps to explain surgical outcome. However, blebless canal procedures have no visible outcome marker because we can't easily track aqueous flow in the venous system. However, we are able to see flow of BSS through the venous channels during canal-based surgery as demonstrated by the episcleral venous fluid wave. This is in vivo confirmation of the original laboratory studies of Grant and Epstein. The wave is an intraoperative marker for flow through the collector channels and serves to document its patency or blockage along with the extent and type of device inserted. For example, with an eye stent, the wave is localized around the device for circumferential flow in the canal is limited. Note the uh, green figure is the location of the eye stent. You can see that there is a blanching in that area that is localized to one to one and a half clock hours. However, with a more circumferential procedure, such as the GAT procedure, a 360-degree ab interno gonioscopy-assisted transluminal trabeculotomy, a rather significant wave may be seen. 
Prior to the wave, you can see the vessels. Following the trabeculotomy ab interno, there's a mark blanching 360 degrees. Thus, the episcleral wave correlates with the type and extent of canal-based surgery. Again, the 360-degree gap procedure with the blanching in comparison to the eye stent. Observe these aqueous veins post trabectome. When the patient looks up, intraocular pressure increases, forcing aqueous through the episcleral veins and plexus next to the trabectome site. As the pressure decreases, the veins fill back up with blood due to episcleral venous pressure. It is time to start studying aqueous veins again with the hope of a better understanding of aqueous outflow. Thank you.